Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to talk a little about time series databases. The time series database isn't exactly a new concept, but it's one that's been becoming more and more relevant over the past few years with the increasing amount of data that's being generated out there in the world, and especially with IoT. So before we talk about time series databases, let's go ahead and define what a time series is. A time series is data recorded as measurements or observations of events as a function of the time at which they are recorded. In other words, you're taking a measurement of the same thing at different times, and all of your data has a timestamp. This kind of measurement is getting more common in a lot of fields. For example, if you have IoT devices, they're constantly sending metrics to the cloud, and they're going to need to be stored in some kind of database once they get there. With the industrial internet or the IoT, you're seeing all kinds of equipment now having sensors that report metrics. And IT systems are generating information like log files for a large number of machines. This kind of data is useful when you want to analyze trends, see how different measurements correlate, or to predict how things will change going forward. Now, you might think, well, I have time series data, but I can just store it in a traditional database and sort by timestamp. But you're going to find that as the size of your data set increases, your database performance deteriorates rapidly. A time series database is purpose-built to handle time series data and can offer much better performance with the same resources. The reason a time series database can do the job better is because it's designed to take advantage of certain characteristics of time series data. First, by definition, time series data always has a timestamp, so time series databases can index data by timestamp. In most scenarios, a large number of data points are being generated all the time, as much as millions per day. Time series databases are able to handle huge amounts of write operations and store huge amounts of data. That said, the rate at which data points are generated is relatively constant. Time series data is usually queried over a specific time period, such as, show me the average temperature over the past 60 seconds, or show me all logs generated in the past hour. For that reason, time series databases need to be efficient at querying time ranges. In terms of operation, time series data is rarely updated or deleted. You can think about log files as an example. Your logging system is basically never going to go back and update an existing entry. It's just going to write new ones. In addition, data is constantly being written but only read periodically, for example, when a report is generated or an analysis is performed. And finally, Time series data is usually deleted based on a time-oriented retention policy, such as all logs older than six months are deleted. Now, there are a few features that time series databases need to support to make sure that they can handle time series data. The first of these is compression. If time series data is being generated constantly, it's going to become very large, very fast, and require a huge amount of storage space. That's why it's essential that time series databases have strong compression capabilities. Downsampling in a time series database context means removing some data points from a data set in a regular manner. For example, if you collect one data point every second, you'll have 3,600 data points for every hour. You could then downsample that to 360 data points in an hour, which would retain one collected data point for each 10 seconds. One use case for downsampling is that in some scenarios, data older than a certain time is downsampled to reduce storage space. For example, we could collect one data point per second and keep all data points for 24 hours so that we can perform real-time monitoring, but downsample that data set after 24 hours because particular data points are no longer as important to us and we don't need to store that many. Also, that data sets with too many data points can be difficult to visualize, so downsampling can produce more readable reports or charts. Aggregation functions are a necessity for time series databases. You need to be able to do operations like sums and averages to make any sense of your time series data. And finally, interpolation, which essentially means regularizing data so that data points exist for all parts of a time range. You may need to use interpolation if your algorithm requires all data sets to have values at the same times, for example. Okay, I hope this information was helpful to you in describing time series data and time series databases. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you.